Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Um, so what we're going to do is, is design this little um, element that when you are in edit mode, um, you know, where you can move the objects around, when you get the um, cursor hovering over one of the objects that can be moved, or if you touch an object that can be moved, this little um, selector, for lack of a better word, is going to appear around the object. And then using that selector, you'll be able to um, rotate the object around um, so that you can not just move it, um, but you'll be able to rotate it. Um, there's some uh, some objects that it makes sense to have rotatable, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to use GIMP. I think I mentioned that I uh, earlier that I use this, and it works pretty well. Um, I am by no means an expert. I'm barely even getting going in this. So if, if you're an expert and you're going, what the heck is he doing? That doesn't make any sense. Um, sorry, just bear with me because I'm just, I learn these things as I go and I learn just enough to do this. So um, let's see, let's get a new image. Um, it doesn't really matter what size it is, but I'll just go ahead and go to the 480 by 360. And let's go with a transparent background and click OK. Okay, so that's what we get to work with. I also, um, on this one, I want to have the grid on. It makes things a little bit easier for me. Um, now I'm gonna start off, what I want is I'm gonna do this circular item. Oh, it's basically a, like a hoop where you can see through the center to see the object down below. And then I'm gonna have a circle attached to the outside of the hoop. And that's the circle where you'll actually click your mouse or hold your finger and then rotate the the little selector uh, in a circle and that will rotate the object underneath. So let's start with uh, the ellipse selector. Now in GIMP, GIMP's not really a drawing tool per se. So in order to get things on the screen, you kind of have to, um, it's not like you're drawing things, you're uh, you're masking stuff off and you're filling. It's, it's anyways, you'll see what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna put in here, um, it doesn't really matter what size it is, we're just gonna draw a circle. I'm going to come down to um, the little attributes here and I'm going to actually change the size to 80 by 80 to make it a circle. And then let's move the position. Since this is um, 480 by 360, the center is going to be 240 by 180. And if you notice, it's off and that's because it's using the top left corner as the, um, the origin of the circle. Now you can click on this expand from center, but that doesn't really do much when you're doing manual uh, adjustment. So let's just subtract. We'll do half of the radius, subtract that from our position, and then again, half of the radius, and subtract that from our position, and that puts us right in the middle. Um, so that looks about right. Okay, so I have the circle. Um, now what we can do with the selection, um, is we can go ahead and we'll go to our Paths tab and we're going to click on this button, button which is the, to change the selection to a path. So I click on that and now we're gonna get, um, you'll see a little representation of our selection. Um, that's created a what we call a path. Um, it's just a way that we can uh, manipulate um, some of the things in GIMP. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll come down here to paint a long path. You probably can't see a lot of that because it's hanging off the edge of the monitor there. Um, let's do let's do five pixels. So I'm going to stroke the line in five pixels. We'll do a solid color. Um, let's change this color to like a green. Somewhere around there. I'm not too worried about it right now. Later we're going to go back and touch some of these things up and make them look neater. Right now I just want to get the general idea out there. So let's hit stroke. So now you'll notice that um, we have a green circle in the middle of the screen here. Now, um, one of the nice things about GIMP and Photoshop and the other things is that you can do layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what, let me, let me bring this over a little bit so it's not hanging off the screen like that. So I'm gonna to go to new layer and uh, add that layer on there. Now one of the things I like to do is I like to name these um, layers so it's a little bit easier to know what I'm dealing with. So we're gonna call this um, thumb tab. 
and you'll see why in a second because what we're going to do is add a second circle so let's go uh, right about here I'm trying to do this kind of within that grid line I'm, I want to see basically it looks like it's about 40 by 40 so let's touch it up by doing that the position looks right 160 by 160 seems pretty even number so I think we got it right on what I'm trying to do is put that circle right on the the edge of this other circle now in this one I'm not going to stroke the path I want this to be filled in so I'm going to go ahead and click the bucket and we'll just click within that little selection area and that's going to fill that color in now you'll also notice um, I should have mentioned this before but the layer is gray so that layer means that we're actually drawing in this specific layer right there okay so I've got that in place um, now let's add another layer and let's call this um, uh, uh, I don't know tangent lines click OK and let's zoom in a little bit so we do this by hitting the plus key Okay, so we're zooming in, and I'm going to pick this tool over here, which is the Paths tool. And actually, I don't like that selection being on the screen, so let's get it off. Okay, so like I said, there's probably better ways of doing some of these things. I'm a novice at best. Okay, and I'm, I want to do, what I'm doing is I'm doing tangent lines to go from the circle down to here, because I want this to kind of be this smooth transition out to the circle and I'm going to come in just a little bit from the edge of the circle so that the line goes in nicely so um, we're going to click once there and then we're going to come down to about where we want the, the line to come in we'll click again so now we have this line here now if you click and hold and drag the middle of this you'll see that this becomes kind of a curve so I'm just going to curve in a little bit and then if you come out here and grab these handles you can kind of tweak it the way you want it so you can move this all around we're just gonna go right about like that come in make this about that you know it's basically it's basically a straight line um, so you know not not being up on my geometry like I should be um, a tangent line is basically gonna be almost a straight line so Oh well, we could have just done that um, as a straight line, but whatever. Okay, so let's go back and uh, now since this is a path, this is a path tool, we've created a path, we'll go in to the path tab and we're also going to click on that stroke. Let's go down about three because it ends up being thicker than the circle was. Um, so we're going to go down to about three and it should be about right. So that looks pretty good. Um, Let's adjust that up a little bit because it looks like down here it's kind of hanging off a bit. So I'm going to make sure I have the right layer selected. And this is why I like working in layers because see now I can move this this line that I've created. I can kind of move it around. So let's line it up a little bit better like that. All right. And now I'm going to duplicate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the entire layer just to make things a little bit easier. So let's do duplicate layer. And so we have tangent lines copy. We're going to go up to layer, go to transform. Let's flip this vertically and voila. Since we were doing everything kind of in the middle, um, I centered the circle and everything. If we flip it, it uh, puts it right in the exact same spot on the other side. So it matches up a little bit better. Okay, so this would be a good point to go ahead and save. So I'm going to call this um, selector. I think I already have one named selector. Nope. Okay, good. Um, because the next thing I want to do is a little bit destructive. We're going to um, merge these layers down so that they become one object. And the reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to come back here and fill in these spots here. And you can see that, uh, you know, as I start to monkey around, now suddenly I've screwed something up. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo. There's these nice fuzzy edges. And if you, if you um, click in the wrong spot when you're using the fill tool, it'll kind of fill in the fuzzy edges and make everything look kind of blah. So to get around that, I'm going to do the, the cloning tool. 
this basically takes an area um, of the drawing and then it allows you to duplicate it in other places. So um, over the drawing, let's see which button is it? Okay, it's the control. So I'm gonna hold down control and you see how it switches to a plus. I'm gonna click here. So now you'll see that that spot is still right there and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start covering this stuff in. You'll see that it moves around. I'm basically just coloring in um, with whatever's under that square. I'm just gonna color this stuff in. I know there's probably much easier ways to do this, but this works for me. Um, I find when I use the bucket tool and try and fill in all those little spots, then uh, I always mess something up. So just fill that in. Let's switch to a smaller brush here and get these little spots. Okay, so I think that's good. And we're gonna add a little bit of depth We'll do that by adding another circle. So let's go ahead and put another new layer in here and we'll call this uh, grip. Okay, and we'll do a circle. Let's go like right about there. And we want this to be smaller than the one was before. We did 40 by 40 on the other one. Let's see what happens if we do 30 by 30. Is that too small? Um, no, that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna create that circle there. We're gonna go a bit darker with our green. Click OK, use the paint bucket tool, color that in. And so merge down so we have a solid image here. Go to filters, reshow emboss. Let's tweak the settings again. Go to bump map, change the depth to be something a little more reasonable. Uh, maybe about seven is okay. Now the azimuth and the elevation, these are things that you can do. You can, as you adjust it, you can see that it has an effect on the lighting and the direction that the, the light comes from. Uh, we'll just tweak it a little bit there. Okay, so now we have this nice three-dimensional object um, that we'll be able to use in our game. So let's go ahead and save this one last time. Oh, and I almost forgot uh, what we need to do is we're going to trim this object down. So um, let's see, we had 80 and then we added on another 40. So it's basically 120. There needs to be another 40 on this side. I'm trying to make it so the center of this image uh, or the circle is still in the center of the image. I'm going to crop it down. So let's go with a square that's about like this and we'll make the size since we want um, 40 on the the little thumb area is, is an extra 40 pixels and the center circle was 80 so that means that we need a total of 160 so 160 on each edge and then the position we're gonna do as uh, I believe if we do 160 is that right? By 105? No, it looks like we need to come up a little more. 100. That looks about right. So now that that's the center of the circle is right in the middle and we've got the thumb pad. And so now as we import this with all the, the area in the middle and we rotate it, um, that center is always going to be there. So let's go to image, crop the selection. Good. All right. So I think we have it exactly the way we want. Save. Um, just in case, let's merge visible layers, make sure everything is the way it should be. Save as, change this to a PNG, and hit save. We'll take it. Um, again, just a reminder, feel free to go to subspacegames.com, check out the forums and the, um, the prototype game. Leave some feedback, comments, click on ads, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, it's, had a lot of good comments really appreciate the support and I'm gonna try and do some more videos I know a lot of you are, are waiting for um, you know for the, the future videos and get moving on the project so we we'll start pushing out some more here and get done I'd like to get the project finished and, and get to a final product so stay tuned and we will keep going we'll talk to you later